So, well done everybody. Now we'll move on to Tina, who is responsible for some of these numbers herself, an excellent trapper. Um, Tina, what have you got for us in terms of ferrets? Um, so, just an introduction. My name is Tina Winder and um, my hobby has become my full-time job thanks to the support of Kiwi Coast NRC and Rural Safe, who does my health and safety in Palmu Farms. So I started trapping as a hobby and I was breeding pheasants and quails and releasing them. And I live in the middle of nowhere up by Anahuta Forest and every year a wave of stoats would come through and kill all my chicks and chickens. So I bought some Doc 200s. Then I got some funding and I was catch quite good at home because you'd hear this trap go off and you just keep going out and like the most I caught in over three days was 14. And then um, another year I got 11, another year I got nine, just by being right there and pulling them out as soon as it went off type thing. Then I got some funding through NRC for more traps. My partner manages the 1600 hectare land court farm that we work on and um, so NRC gave us some bio fund to, to set that up. And then a few years on, Landcorp put into place, they wanted all their farms, Northland farms trapped in conjunction with NRC and Kiwi Coast. That's where I met Andy and um, I showed them all my catches and what I'd done and what I was doing. And they gave me the job to do all the Landcorp farms, which was quite exciting and nerve wracking. Um, I also do night shooting with thermals to um, protect the young trees that they've planted and um, from hares, pigs and possums. And the thermals are also a really good tool for seeing where you may have missed a few patches of possums or they've reinvaded. And um, yeah, they're, they're actually an excellent tool. They're worth the money to um, get some. You'll be, you know, you'll, we thought we were doing a good job spotlighting with just the spotlights and then when we bought the thermals you just drive so past so many stuff it's crazy but um yeah so you know whether we do the next um, slide please I think I just covered this one and what I was saying before sorry but yeah so next slide so what we covered today is the baits that I use in my traps, mainly I've got Doc 250s and Doc 200s, and of course SA2 um, cat traps. So um, for my, I like making my bait up into a brine, and so I dissolve, say, I've got a video somewhere along here, which will probably pop up later, which shows what I do, but I dissolve two large cups of salt and approximately five litres of water and add up my chopped bait. I make the bait large, you'll see in the video, and then just sort of swirl it around a bit. And then where the bait's sticking up out of the top of the water, I just sprinkle some salt on there. So it's good to cut your baits large. I know you're not there to feed them, but you're there to attract them. And I feel like the larger baits will um, lure, the lure the biggest smell. And also just while I'm getting my trap open, I'll put the bait on top of the trap so that the smell goes through the top of the trap as well. And I use the heads, just skin a bit of the cheeks. I use the stomach and I just squeeze the green stuff out of the stomach. I know it sounds terrible, but, and then the liver and nearly full term babies. I know that sounds terrible, but they're really good. Like they're excellent bait for the um, stoats and weasels. And so next check, if you come along and you, you feel like your, your bait's a little bit slimy, it's usually good in the middle, but the outside, just put more salt in your um, mix. And then, um, yeah, you can buy 20 kg bags of salt from farm stores for approximately $12. Um, next slide, please. So um, yeah, here's a few pictures of some ferrets that I've caught. Um, the one in the middle is two weasels. I don't know how I managed to do that, but they were supposed to be stoats pictures, but yeah. Um, so I've sort of gone through that, but 
With this recipe in the past two years alone, I've caught 16 ferrets, 165 stoats, 208 weasels and 355 feral cats, over a 24,000 hectare area, which sort of ranges from Rangiputa down to Umamari. But um, I'm not saying the numbers because I'm showing off, it just really freaks me out how many pests there are out there and how many more there are to catch because I know I haven't, you haven't caught them all. But um, the two, there's two ferrets there with one by milk bottle and one by a shoe. We actually shot them night shooting, but our story for that is to come further on. So we could just go forward again. So here's the video. I'll just does that have sound? Yeah, it's it's quite quiet, um, Tina. I'll just keep playing it and hopefully people can hear. Okay. I've sort of already started mixing this, but I just dissolved about a cup full of salt and about three litres of water. And I chopped rabbit up today. It's about that big. And this best with the fur on. Just put them all in the salt water and then just, tip, just give it a smush around so that it sort of all goes through everything. And then sprinkle a little bit on the top, which is sticking out. And then just leave that to soak overnight. Then maybe in the morning give it another stir around and leave it to soak for a bit longer. And then drain the fluid out, put it in a in a bottle, and just squirt a bit on the top of the trap and squirt either side of the trap so we can see a trap going along or something like that, so that the bait, so they've got a wider bait smell. That's the locals, sorry, a bit noisy. Um, yeah, and then this I just freeze in two kg bags. So you can just grab a bag out, just freeze them smaller or larger, however much. But just adjust the salt to the amount of liquid that you use. Yeah, that's what I do. Thank you. Gina, thank you, Jake. So next, um, next. So the tools that we use, use cameras, they're excellent. Here's a picture of a uh, wily ferret that she caught yet, but we will, hopefully. Um, the time on the camera set wrong for some reason, but if there are ferrets, ferrets present, cage traps work really well. You can, um, if you're in a position to do daily checks, like we, where we night shoot, if we shoot turkeys or a lot of hares, we just dump, make a little dump site and um, yeah, we've shot lots of cats and stuff for, and you get whole families come up to it and then everything gets used to feeding in that area, which has sort of already been discussed before. So, and then they're more likely to go into the trap. So next um, one, please. So um, my ferret experiences, this is down on a marmory. It was two photos that I pointed out before. We were in night shooting and just with the spotlights this time and um, saw this thing running along in front of us. We'd never seen a ferret before. And um, so we shot that little fellow. He was only a half grown ferret. And then um, the next trap, I thought, right, I had a Doc 250 there, but I thought, right, there must be a family here if this is only a little fella. So I picked up some Doc 250s from other parts of the farm. And by the time I got there, it was the e night. It was about seven, eight o'clock at night in the dark. And so I set up my um, stuff, set up my traps, fluffed around there for about half an hour, jumped in side by side, backed around to turn around. And there's a ferret sitting on the log, bloody watching me. So I shot that, I thought I'd missed it, but luckily he'd just fallen down under the log. So I, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. And then um, they seem to be very curious and not really that worried about too much. The, um, I actually taxidermied the one that I shot and 
the skin on the back of his neck is thick, really thick, like nothing could bite through it. It's like pig skin. So I did researching and they nocturnal, more active just after dusk and just before dawn. They're also really scent driven, might be why they can't resist the bigger bait. But I have actually caught more in Doc 200s than I have in the Doc 250s. But, um, but then I have also heard that they come out in the daytime as well when they're really hungry. So yeah, um, also listen to all sources. There's a lot of people with a lot of knowledge to share and everything you learn will be proven right. And then another instance, it'll be wrong, but both are right because different areas have different behaviors. So just be adaptive and try everything. Another interesting experience, this was on Titogi. I opened a Dock 250 on top of a ridge. It was set off and there was a large ferret foot in the trap. So obviously it had twisted itself off out. Which, and then two trap checks later, like three weeks apart, approximately two k's away down in a swamp gully. It's sort of two, that was two gullies and uh, um, away as well. There was a juvenile and an ad adult ferret. I think the, the picture will be next in a double dock 200. And when I looked closely at the large ferret, it only had one front foot. So interesting that it went into another trap after the first horrific trap experience it had and if you look in the picture you can see that it was only just caught the trap sort of just smashed it squished its head up into the side of the box so if it had two front legs would it have managed to pull out or and why did it go in there was it trying to protect its baby or was it just hungry so next check next um slide please So there, there they are, there, the um, mother ferrets, the one at the bottom, on the bottom side, so. And then next slide, please. Yeah, so yeah, I would like to really thank again Kiwi Coast and NRC and Palmer Farms for their support. It's a really, really fun job. It's a bit mind, um, stressful sometimes because as fast as you kill you know you get the possum numbers and stuff down they just reinvade from outside so sometimes you don't think you're doing a very good job but you just got to keep going and yeah hopefully there'll be more areas that are trapping and we can get on top of them so thank you everybody for listening Awesome. Thank you, Thank you very much, Tina. That was that was really good. I like the way from some of the gory things that you've shown and then you end up, uh, that was a fun job. This is a fun job. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Hey, and I think you've got a really good point there, Tina, about um, sometimes if there's trapping and there's pest control, you can feel like you're not getting anywhere. There's just that constant reinvasion. And I guess that's one reason why we were so keen to have what we call that Kiwi Coast Award for, for projects this is a small way of recognizing the work going on and if that can help motivate people and just keep people going and sustain the work that's going on um, then anything we can do to help with that because it's, it's hard to keep going sometimes but we are together making a big difference out there look at that 500,000 pests taken out of Northland over the last nine years that's got to have made a difference really has hey so um I can see some questions coming through there. Andy, what have you got for Tina? Okay, Tina, hi. Um, hey. Okay, what rifle do you favour with the night sights? Um, I've got and a HMR, but it's not very reliable in windy weather, so, you know, I'll use my 223. 223, okay, and what um, night vision gear have you found the best? I've got an L25 thermal, thermal vision. I've just started using a new night vision, but I can't remember the name, but it's I haven't sort of got used enough to say what, um, yeah, what it is, sorry. But I did have a pad night vision, but that was very, you had to be super still. And a lot of the time when you're shooting stuff, you can't doodle around, you've got to just, 
get in and do it. Get in, you know, you've only got a limited time to get your shot in. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. And another question that's come in, Tina, live captures, have you tried them or had any success with them? I have tried them, but I haven't had success with them, but I have heard of other people who have had, but a lot of the places that we go, we're only there for two days. So I I try filling them up with stuff and wiring them open so that the next check, but then I've had um, people who work there interfere with them. So it hasn't been very successful in that way, but I have heard from a lot of people that they are they are a good tool when you can be there all the time to do it. Excellent. Hey, we'll stop the questions there, Tino. There's more coming up through the chat. There's a lot of interest. And even when I put up the photo of you on Kiwi Coast Facebook page and your results um, that you've got over the last two years, um, over a thousand people looked at that. You're amazing. So if you can keep an eye on that chat and uh, maybe answer some questions, I'll now go to a spot prize question. This is since Tina loves her double traps so much. Good on you, Tina. Um, for a key industries double rat trap, this comes with two rat traps and the holder as well. Um, how many ferrets did Tina catch in the last two years? Oh, Camille, you, Camille, <laughs> Camille, Peter, and Ada are quite right. Okay, so I know Camille's already um, won a flipping Timmy. So if you don't mind, uh, Camille will go next. To, we'll go to Peter. Is that Peter, all right? Okay. Oh, look, maybe we'll do both. We'll do both. So I'll put down there Camille and, and Peter Hunt. That's really good. Okay. Hi, um, Andy here. I think that mapping of ferrets in Northland is going to be really valuable information. Okay. Yeah, so all, all we'll be able to do is where a project has submitted their pest control results, we can put a figure out which ferrets have come from that project area. That'll be about as accurate as we get it at the stage, unless we want to go more high tech with, with Trapping Z if people are using that to record their catches. So as, as with anything, the data that comes in will determine what how good we can get thing, things out of that. But yeah, we might start doing that. We've got some new mapping consultants who will be able to help us do some pretty whiz bang stuff. 